Well, you might have forgotten about it, but yep, we've still got the Avensis. Now, after we'd finished our M25 road trip with the Rover, we weren't really sure what to do with the old girl. We thought about selling it on, but no one was really interested in it. We thought about continuing to work on it and improve it, but to be honest, it's not really worth enough to warrant that kind of investment. And then we thought, let's do some good with it. So we offered the Avensis up to the Association of Heritage Engineers to teach their guys about working on cars, maintaining and repairing them. And what have they done with it? Well, they've brought it to Silverstone. To be precise, the Toyota Parallel Pomeroy, a series of auto test style challenges organised by Toyota GB and the Vintage Sports Car Club and open to anyone with a Toyota. But before we find out how the Avensis gets on against some exotic and unusual Toyotas, let's speak to Dom from the Association of Heritage Engineers. I run a not-for-profit organisation which supports young people, heritage crafts, and hand skills and we work with everything from watchmakers to people who restore Spitfires with classic cars and various other things being involved. AOHE was set up initially to support the Heritage Skills Academy and the work that they do. My youngest son Oliver being in their first cohort. We are here today with the AOHE race team. The team consists of three apprentices from the Heritage Skills Academy. Oliver Taylor Lane, my son, Ben Ashton and Joe Meller. With the Avensis stickered up and the team ready, we queued up for test A, a slalom followed by stopping in the box. An automatic rep car might not be the weapon of choice for this, but with strong winds and heavy rain rolling in to hamper the more powerful cars, it's anyone's game. Test B, what have we got to do? So, starting between A, accelerating, and stop between C and F. And I think that's it. The Avensis surprised everyone here by stopping better than expected. So Ben, who was driving, braked, then briefly accelerated again, and then came to a stop. Not ideal, but the Avensis still managed a respectable time. Hello. Test C was more complicated, a test of braking and acceleration in quick succession. With a series of cone gates laid out, cars had to accelerate from gate A forwards to straddle D, then backwards to straddle B before forwards to stop on C. Finally, back to straddle B, then accelerate towards and stop between D and E. It's easy to forget this order in practice, and plenty of people lost points here. Ollie, who was driving, did well here, and the Avensis' strong takeoff meant it changed direction quickly. But the tiny gap between neutral and drive on the gear selector did cause some hesitation and lost time here. Finally, test D, drawing out the Toyota logo as a half oval, followed by the top part of the T, then the other half of the oval, and then a loop to make the other half of the T. Pouring rain and standing water hampered any power advantages of MR2s and Supras here, so a neatly drawn logo with carefully deployed power saw the Avensis in good stead. Morning tests done, we ventured out onto the track for a parade lap. 
hardly the conditions for it, but I bet whoever ordered this green automatic event sys back in 1997 never could have imagined what it would be up to 25 years on. It wasn't the fastest lap ever, but there is something cool about taking such an everyday car around Silverstone. After lunch and with the sun coming out, it was time to repeat the tests. Would the lack of rain help or hinder the team? Did I hear anything? Or... Nope. The afternoon's test B was a standout. On a simple acceleration and brake, our 122,000 mile automatic Avensis matched the time posted by a 260 horsepower GR Yaris. 3.8. 3.8. Yeah, I don't know how you just did that. You did that exact same time as that GR Yaris. <laughs> <laughs> the glare and standing water didn't help, but the Avensis pulled it out of the bag for some impressive results in the afternoon. With all four tests complete, we loaded the old girl up onto the trailer, and I felt pleased with what we'd done here. Not only are we given three apprentices the chance to take part in a motorsport event, but we're given a totally average retmobile the chance to shine. When we later learned that out of 62 competitors, the Aventis came 20th, beating all manner of MR2s, Celicas, Supras and more modern machinery, I couldn't help but feel proud of it. It might not be the most charismatic car, and it's hardly the ideal auto test vehicle, but the Aventis and the team had done us proud. Mm -hmm.